until I was 35. Then the Punani tsunami hit. And honestly, I went through more crumpet than a Warburton's factory. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 18 of Couples Quarantine. I'm James Haskell. I'm Chloe Maidley. We've got a very special guest. But before I introduce them, you might, viewers who have listened to this before and seen this before, may know that we had a huge, huge argument uh, at some points and almost, there was almost some separation going on over the subject of getting a dog, right? Chloe was, I don't want dogs. I don't understand dogs. Dog people are weird. Dog people <laughs> smell, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, why would you want to have a dog? You'll love the dog more than me. Cue uh, a month and a half later, we've got Bert, who's sitting in his uh, uh, crate behind <laughs> us, right? And Chloe has turned into the <laughs> ultimate dog woman. She treats the dog like it's a person. She talks to it like a person. She, she the other night, this example, right? I went like, Bert, come on, we've got to go, to, go out for a wheeze before bed. And she went, no, you're going to wake him up too aggressively. <laughs> Bert. But and I was like, Chloe, okay, it's dog, a fucking dog. At this dog. point, it's like 11 o'clock at night, so way past his bedtime. He was fast asleep. He had to go to the toilet, as all dog owners <laughs> of one, wait, of which I am one. Uh, well, no, he had to go to the loo before we put him in the crate. And James, all of a sudden, was like, he's fast asleep. He was like, bah! Like, so was like, slapping his legs, whistling. I was like, shh, 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 shh. I was like, it's 11 o'clock at night. He's asleep. He's got to go back to sleep in a minute. Gently, I was like, but wake up, come on. And Bollocks. just started walking about the room. He had a huge go at me. He was like, you're a freak, you're a weirdo. Yep. It's a dog, not a person. Okay. Anyway, I'm just a better dog owner than So me. that's just a bit of information. <laughs> so the point is, is that you can have an argument, but if your missus on board, you basically get what you want. That's rule number one. We've learned a couple of quarantine. Our guest today, I've always been a huge fan of his. Mm. He is a multi-talented, I want to say sex symbol slash comedian slash TV, <laughs> TV commentator, <laughs> pundit, presenter. It is... Russell Kate, everybody. Yeah. Hello, how are you doing? It's so, it's so lovely hearing the relationship with the dog. Are you, are you breastfeeding or bottle feeding? So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that you went straight in with a, with a crack. I actually wanted to ask you, like... What type of dog is got... it? You didn't say what breed. We can't imagine the type of parenthood you're having. What are you trying to bring up? A Dalmatian with loads of energy, a pug that's quite chilled? <laughs> no, it's... All a... right, calm down, Caesar Milan. How <laughs> the fuck do you know about how, the dog? Yeah, do you have a dog? I do. I have a pug, and I've also I'm really into the dog training and obedience and everything like that. My dog goes on stage, does all kinds of things. Been on TV twice this month. So oh my he, god! He has to be extra, extra work by command. He works by sign language. I crate trained him because that crate I can see in the background there. Is yeah. it or not? He's it's, a, it's, it's got he's his a five month old fox red lab, and he's incredibly good looking. I'm not joking. I'm not just blowing smoke off his ass. He is. The best looking dog I've ever seen. He's, I a, he's a what? A fox red lab? Yeah. yeah. Fox, yeah. Red, fox lab. red lab. He's, a, he's an absolute dream boat. He's basically... He looks like a fox in a Labrador had a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. But he's a dream boat. He's, he's honestly, I would say the second best. Are you best. sure you've not adopted a fox? <laughs> it's, going through the bin, it's going through the bins behind you. <laughs> Wait. But all, all dogs do have bushy, bushy ginger tails with white yeah. tips, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so happy for you. I, I am, bi as you know, bipetual, which means I own cats and dogs. Yes. I, I don't I don't get the cat person, dog person debate. I couldn't live without either any of my beasties, so I'm a real animal person. That's well, really interesting. So you feel like you're just as attached to the cat as the dog? Well, this is the thing people don't understand about um, cats. We don't understand about that pussy here. Is that... Um, <laughs> Is that cat I'm a really we, adverse with a pussy. I had the cats, I don't care. If we sat down to have a conversation about dogs, we'd have a big long discussion. I don't think we should get a Labrador. It needs lots of walking. Why don't you get a pug? Oh, I don't, it's not a proper dog. It's brilliant. We'd, we'd go right into the breed characteristics. Yeah. If I said we're going to get a cat, you'd be like, don't like cats. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't even entertain that the gulf between a Burmese cat and a Persian cat is bigger temperament wise than the gulf between a Chihuahua and a Pitbull, in my, my opinion. Oh, God, you actually it's know loads. So different raising an Oriental. Or Burmese cat. My cats sit, high five, fetch, recall. They're not out of the room. You get all, they both walk on leads. You get all of that dog type um, connection, but they bury their own shit in the garden. <laughs> I've Maybe seen this. See, so I, I've got to say, you know, because before we met, met properly, I was a, obviously a big fan of yours. I love the caning stuff that you do. Um, and I've seen on your Instagram the stuff about the cat. And obviously, sometimes, depending on what hat you're wearing, because we we did your show, Boys Don't Cry, which is a very successful podcast, which people need to check out. But we'll talk about a bit, yep. a bit of that later. And we actually talked about different personality traits when Chloe and I did it about, you know, being extrovert, introvert, or an ambivert. 
you being a cat and dog vert or pervert, pervert. Or whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Like me. Let's be honest. That's why you. That's why here. But you, but you, <laughs> obviously, you're, you, I've seen you plug in the cats and the dogs. But the, the cat stuff, I can't believe they bury their own shit and do the high five because you said that. But I thought you would just probably done. Cats naturally bury their own poo. But the, the mistake people make with cats is they bring them into the house and don't train them. So you have got your average cat. You'll, yeah. you'll be stroking it three times and it'll turn around and claw you. And they'll be like, "Oh, that's what cats are like." It's it's because people don't correct or train cats when they're kittens. I'm, I don't, I, there's not much difference I've followed in the raising of Terry, my Burmese, than <laughs> Colin, my pug. I thought, apart from the crate training, which you don't need with cats, and the doggy, like poo training, the dogs, cats do it automatically. I've used exactly the same stuff, same energy, same discipline. And now I've got cats that you can pick up and hold like babies. They're safe when kids come around. To, to kind of, what's it called? Join it up to the couple's conversation. I feel like it's been really good for you and me because obviously we don't have kids and like we don't we don't have a property together. He has his house where we are now and I've got my flat in London. And I feel nice. like it's been The really life raft, for, I call that. The life right? raft stage. <laughs> yeah, abort, yeah, abort. <laughs> yeah, life raft. Um, I'm out. I, I to- listen, I totally approve of pet. It's like training for, for decide, do we want children? Are, are we going to have children? Yeah. And people often get a cat or a dog. Some couples might want to do the foundation course gerbil um <laughs> I, every, I think that's every, a good idea <laughs> some yeah. people aren't ready for cat or dog so they start a, a gerbil there is even an ant certificate you can do if you want to look after but, an ant together can yeah, i ask you, you sort of... genuinely though do you feel, do you feel like it prepared you for having your daughter yes or, totally and utterly uh, yes so because, explain this. but when you say when you say it as a dog owner people like people you know mother earth and daddy earth parents that you can't describe having a dog to having a baby get out my house Bullshit. <laughs> all totally, of Chloe's friends. All of totally Chloe's friends. Totally prepares you. It prepares you uh, with the feelings of irrational love, of making mistakes, i.e. earlier. Like you're, you've got the battle here between discipline and waking him up and they'll be gentle with it. All of those <laughs> things. Uh, but between not being able to go on holiday properly, between having to think about something else, cleaning up shit. And it it's just that ramped up with a baby. So it's brilliant training it, in my opinion, and I've done both. Oh, fat. well, that's fantastic. I, I felt exactly the same way about that, just because people say it's totally different. It's totally different. It's not I said, totally different. but it's not totally different. It's impossible for it to be totally different, you know. And also, people always say having a dog's hard. I'm like, no. When the dog's a little dick, you can put it in his crate, let it calm down, give it a snack, and it's fine. When your kid's a dick and it's 18, yeah. what do you do? <laughs> when your daughter, you know, dogs never come in in a thong at 15, going, "Dad, I'm leaving the house." You're like, "You're fucking not," you know. <laughs> That's the other macabre benefit: is dogs don't live to 18. So if you have made a mistake, <laughs> 10 years to write it out. That's what I, that's what my physio said. My physio Kevin, I went, <laughs> I, he went, "Why are you? He said, you look a bit stressed today." I said, "I said, oh, fucking Chloe." I said, "I love her, but you know, she's having a proper row about this dog. She doesn't want one." He went, "What? She does know a dog's not for life, doesn't she?" And I went, "Yeah, I've told her that, but she doesn't appreciate it." What was this? Oh, well, as soon as we got, we had a massive. Row, when you were still trying for a dog yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Pushing yeah. And pushing actually and pushing. the way we look it's lucky we wouldn't give birth to an actual dog like, I'm like oh. <laughs> you do well, that you trolling right. themselves listeners <laughs> oh yeah but we do troll ourselves at all times yeah. well you troll me all well time. firstly off 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 subject how are you doing how are you how are you finding lock, lockdown to uh, so um obviously the there was a period it's t- tantalizing period in the middle where my business my analog business went back online so the theaters reopened we took the we took these big theaters on one two thousand seats stuck three four hundred people in them and it was legal to play them and it was like life was returning back to normal mm. i'm i'm checking my privilege yes i'm lucky yes i've still been able to earn a living and do everything i need to do but my business hasn't and you do sort of feel a sort of if all of rugby was dying even if you were okay james you would still feel a sort of associated pain with the rest of yeah. rugby mm-hmm. and that's what i am like with um stand up you feel a sort of a brother and sisterhood with all your other performers and it's just been absolutely horrible seeing it all shut again yeah. uh, but i have turned into daytime telly legend. I described myself today, funnily enough, Chloe, as Richard Madeley on Red Bull. Because I've, <laughs> I've been over on Channel 4 repping it with uh, Steph's Pat Lunch. So I've, I've discovered I can talk about all everything from cactuses to, you know, fashion decisions. And they let me do a bit of stand-up. So I've been very happy. And hopefully the theatres will reopen again soon. You know, yeah. I'll start rinsing it like a Bosch dishwasher again. <laughs> well, she said they're very good. So I was going to say, like, I I know that you, we've known you for years and we've gone come to your shows and we've done some of your broadcast stuff um, and we obviously absolutely love you and we love how you speak about your wife. And I wanted to know the fact that you're a performer and I, I'm married to a performer in a very different context, but you are both yeah. of a type. Um, how How is your kind of relationship or your marriage fared through a time where a performer is stuck indoors and the long-suffering wife can't get out of the house? I mean, how is it all going in terms of your relationship? 
can't speak for anyone else. That has been the massive surprise of lo- uh, the first lockdown, definitely for me. The shit kicked off. I can't remember what day it was, March 24th. On March the 25th, literally the next day, I woke up. I'm going to be doing Facebook Lives. I'm going to do a rant a day. I filled the diary of my head and I was at home. Suddenly not absent, not tired, not not that guilt of missing me and my daughter. Weirdly, I would say from March to certainly October, our relationship was better for it because yeah. the thing as uh, stand-up battles again, I'm guessing it's the same if you're like international sports person or whatever you're doing in this business is the absence is what makes me and Lindsay argue, which is a good sign really. Mm. Uh, and when I'm like, if I'm doing TV all day and then a gig at night, I don't even want to answer my phone. I don't want to FaceTime. It's hard for some people to understand. I don't want to fucking do anything. Yeah. So eat my bo- my box of food and save my fake ass personality for the people that are paying me later. <laughs> Whereas all of a sudden, I've been Mr. Daddy. I've been camping in the garden for the first for the first fucking two months. I thought I was going to put Lindsay in a wheelchair. We were shagging something rotten. She went full Hawking by April. It was crazy. She was like, please stop fucking me. <laughs> And what do you do? Just unplug that and carry on. <laughs> well, I, I think, like, as you say, I think the second lockdown was a bit more like the the worry, the worry of hang on a second, we're just buying another house. We haven't sold the one we're in. I've taken on mm. all these things, thinking I'm the, mm. the, you know, the notorious PIMP with no. I've got, I don't have a mortgage or a pension. You loser. I'm self employed <laughs> in the arts, and then my diary's gone and emptied like Dominic Cummings' eyes. Yeah. I've snorting. I've been snorting Imodium. That's how scared I am. <laughs> I know, listen, I, I'm, I'm not saying this to try and show off, but I've just, I'm a late bloomer. There's nothing I can do about it. And my game is not necessarily related to age. And for whatever reason, I've hit my peak creativity, best shows, best reviews, just got my best ever review in The Guardian three weeks ago. Congrats. Right now. This is my year I peak. And it's the fucking year I've worked least. Yeah. And that is starting to eat away now, this kind of Picasso locked in the basement, burning his artwork. And it's no, yeah. so it sounds so arrogant, but I feel like I've got the, I've only, I think the day, like I know I might look of my age, but I'm 45 years old. How many more years of strutting around at 100 miles an hour have I got? I might have five, big tours in me and I'm flushing one of them down the drain with a load of chewed up bat and pangolin. Well, I mean, first of all, I wouldn't love that. Also, Russell, I love it because every time you make an amazing joke, you laugh. Yeah. I'm like, you're not meant to laugh. Wait, the thing is, the best bit is but that is how I process. Down. You've been locked down so long, you're laughing at your own jokes. That's the best <laughs> bit. You're like, that used yeah. to a crowd. <laughs> I've, got no, I've got no other, you know, like some stand ups, nothing against them, but they're normally much better stand ups than me, are brilliant writers, but. But my personality on and off, you know, you guys have seen me off stage, yeah. seen me backstage, we've yeah. talked to each other quite a lot. There isn't really a gap. I've just monetized my personality. So a bit like James, really. It's just you plus a microphone, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. And um, I'm, 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 I'm assuming yeah. it's the same for you, Carl. And I know, I know you're a little less well, well than James, but if, if you, the advantage of, of that is if, you're, if your thing is humor, it is a it is a weapon. It yeah. is a defense mechanism. I, it's some horrible shits happened. We've lost family members. I've lost my, one of my older pets. But humor, humor, humor is what is what keeps you safe. I always say there must be a reason that ugly, funny men are attractive to women. It must have had a survival benefit back in the day. Yeah. There'd be some guy, the handsome one, and you were being funny in the corner, and you still shagged the top bird. A hundred percent. It all comes down to how you make somebody feel. And if you make, male or female, if you make somebody feel good and laugh and want to spend more time with you, then of course, you know, you basically become like cracks to them. They're like, want to spend time with you, want to spend time with you. That's yeah. how you So what you're it. saying is I'm in the corner of the, I'm corner of the cave. Uh, the good looking one's been eaten by a saber tooth. She's feeling upset. I roll in and make some fucking laugh going, oh, he's a bit of a pussy anyway. Wee. And we're in. And before you know, I've got a club over the back of the head and taking her back to my cave. Well, you've got the best of both worlds. You could probably club the saber as well. So I yeah, well, yeah, possibly. Spicy, yeah. Roll it in seven secret spices. Fry it. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it in a pit of bread straight in the gob um, Kentucky Fried Sabre <laughs> one thing I've got to ask you is you saw the government uh, said obviously reskill, rethink, retrain was there any part of you that thought I actually might have to start looking at some other bits because because of how bleak it was and the fact that for example obviously since I've, I've retired you know all my stuff is public facing after dinners mm. uh, corporate speaking DJing uh, you know, all those times. I haven't had that for ages. I did some filming stuff uh, in lockdown and did a couple of of uh, virtual stuff. Uh, but I, I've obviously been sitting around going, what the fuck am I doing at the moment? Do you, do you, have you had that at all? I, I, I did at first, in the March, April, I said to Lindsay, it's time to, we have to consider, this could be a four year, at the time, we were thinking to three, four years, and we could, I could earn no money at all for four years. So I did have a couple of plan Bs in place. I had a did have a short but successful career as in advertising before I did this. 
So I was ready to go back into that. Something really easy to do from home, headlines, creative concepts for big brands. And I wouldn't have had any qualms about putting the justice hat on the floor. And I'm working class in the day. You do what you do to pay the bills. By the time I got to April, May, and I realized, shit, I'm quite good at being funny down a webcam. Where I've been doing all these caning blogs, accidentally, I sort of prepared for a pandemic. So some of the other stand-ups, well, what do you want to be giving your material away in a bedroom? It's, you can save it for the theatre. So I, I was the person, the prepper with beans in the basement. Everyone laughing at my beans. All of a sudden, nuclear bomb goes off. Fucking yeah. bean fest. But I've been very careful to constantly check my, my, my privilege because you've got to, if you're one of the lucky ones like me, you've got to take care of the rest of your business. So I'm, I'm yeah. really involved in helping to try and make things work for everyone. Not because I'm just some yeah. wanky do-gooder, because I'm selfishly interested in comedy surviving. Uh, two things. What was your, can you give me any advertising slogan that you came up with that you're quite proud of? Can you remember anything off the top of your head? There must be something because you said you're quite good at it. Like Yeah, well, the last the last thing I did was um, one, I did a big Lucas Aid campaign at the end. It was a vid, last thing I did was a visual idea, actually, which was where Lucas Aid, the energy benefit was spelled out in bubble. So if you're at a petrol garage, the petrol pumps were like spelled out in bubbles. So I translated anything energy based you would see in your environment would be spelled out with a LucasAid bubble. So I did that. I also launched uh, Green and Blacks was the last thing I did, the Green and Blacks chocolate, which now seems so massive. Everywhere. But when I went before I left work in 2006, it was just a little startup. So the line, it deserves a little respect. That was me and the creative planner, Simon Callender. You might not remember the launch line, but that was the line that... Oi, look oh, at this guy. has got Russell. fucking more layers Congratulations. than Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Would you, go, would you go back to it? If you, Would yes. you happily go back to it if you had yes, to? Yes, happily. Yeah. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. you got to remember, my mom, I'm not getting the violin out here. My mum's a cleaner. My dad's a manual labourer. My fucking Uncle Bob once owned an ice cream van. I, I am... Are leading a blessed existence yeah. to sit on a purple cushion and think of a headline for a chocolate bar. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should be in a beeping stuff through or, or shoveling ballast on a building site. Something's gone wrong, and I'm not going to question the wiring. Did you? How did you find trying to do stand up online actually um, without the, the crowd interaction? I suppose because you've been ranting on the That's caning what I mean. stuff. You I'd don't accidentally need it. Been, so when I first did the caning, so I was it was. 2016, 2017, I was working on a, a project, a survival show of all things with a YouTuber. And this YouTuber said to me, why do none of your lot put their material online? I don't understand it. We're cleaning up here with substandard jokes. You, you can be mildly amusing on YouTube and have a living. He said, yeah. so why don't you lot come and wipe out? And I said, oh, it doesn't work like that. We really craft our material and we can't give it away. Went, but what about your B-list stuff that's not quite good enough for the theatre? And I yeah. thought, why the fuck does no one do that? So I went back home. And it took, I would say, six months for me to work out the timing of being funny and leaving a, a gap for an imagined laughter. And I and I um, calibrated that by looking at comments, feedback, doing a few things live. And eventually, I got my first few viral hits. And I've been doing that for four years. So when yeah. this shit hit the fan, it was like, oh, my God, how are we going to do a gig on Zoom? I'm like, well, that's easier than what I've been doing because I've got comments in the comment bar or a few yeah. heads laughing. So I've had, taken to, uh, you know, duck to water. Um, yeah. And now of my diary... It's quite full in December. I'm doing all the office parties, all the tech firms that can't have a comedian in a room in a hotel. I'd pop up as a floating head, rip the shit out of the MD, then fuck off again. I'm in my lounge watching Netflix with a glass of wine by half ten. Let's just say, hypothetically, everything goes straight back to normal after this lockdown, which obviously it won't, but if it did, do yeah. you think that you would keep up um, kind of the momentum and the, the, the attention which you're giving online stuff? Yeah, but well, I, I to be honest with you, the caning rants I, at the start, I was trying, let's do two, three a week, but I've worked out one or two a week is plenty. I don't think I would do Zoom gigs if theatres were open. They, as soon as the theatres reopened in July and August, they died a death because they are they are a decent thing to do if the theatres are closed, but they're just one thing that does not, it can't hold a, a, a torch to, to, to real. You just can't beat human beings. We are apes at the end of the day. We're programmed to connect and touch in, in thousands of ways. And until the tech gets to a point where we're actual holograms that tricks the brain into thinking it's real, theatres will be alive and well, and it will never re be replaced with Zoom, never. No, I agree. So, so we've um, the reason we wanted to get you on uh, the show is obviously because a you're an extremely funny man, but ma more importantly, you have an incredible relationship with your wife. <laughs> and the last stand up that Chloe and I went and watched was when you came to Northampton. You very kindly got us tickets, and we sort of walked into this non-stop laughathon. But you went in and go quite hard at, <laughs> at your at your missus. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, how would you sum up your 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 lovely wife? Because you sort of make out she's a fiery. 
I mean, yeah, you you tell us. She so she's out of the two out of the two of us when it comes to things like organising, like banking, planning. <laughs> I am the nutty meerkat, always on, always analysing, can't switch off, making lists on the wall, tidying up person. Yeah. Um, but when it the chips are down and we've got a drink in us, she is like all a Joe Pesci in a wig. She's fucking, <laughs> fucking have it then, you can't. She's that one. Um, so she's not as man because I make a sound. That's for comedy effect. She's from Cheshire. But I always say they're all from Cheshire till the fourth drink. Then they're like, fucking come at me, you bastard. Uh, I'm definitely not a confrontation person. I've got this far into my life without, unless you count my rugby games, without having any physical contact with another human being. <laughs> Uh, I just it's just not in my nature I, I use my I use words to de-escalate situations I'm very I can I can't even recall shouting at another grown man drunk ever in my life in any pub I've, and I am the messiest of messy fucked up I beat the holidays 18 times <laughs> rolling down the street I've never got into ag it's just not in my nature whereas Yesterday, for example, literally yesterday, we did a dog a dog walk over the park, and within two minutes, Lindsay had taken. Would you mind picking up your shit? Excuse me, you need to have some responsibility. Take care of your fucking dog. I got my child. It. That's where we were. I I definitely, that's no drinks. That's a sober Sunday walk. Your dog's <laughs> shat all over the floor. His ass was going like a sprinkler. Pick it up. And the woman's like, diarrhea. Stop bullying me. <laughs> And, and, and what do start, you do? The dog started charging us. And Lindsay's like, I will strike your animal if it approaches. I will strike your animal. She, I probably am so polite. I would have, while I was being having my leg savage, would have apologised to the dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry for hurting your teeth, Mr. <laughs> Bigglesworth. She won't take any shit off anyone, ever. Right. So uh, what do you I, do when she's kicking off? Do you like cower in a corner? Are you like... The only like, what because do you of do? what I do for a living, I think right. it's more the it's more the it's, I don't, hate saying things which are unrelatable and sound cunty. But I've kept myself off the top parts of the Daily Mail for the wrong reasons my whole career. I've been up for some good stuff here and there. Yeah. Like I've done a good show. Or, yeah. So I'm instantly yesterday hoodie up, turned away, um, ready to pick Minna up and protect my daughter from this dog. But ultimately, just I let. Sylvester Stallone, what are going to call it? Joe Pesci just did her business. When it's got a drink in it, she's something else. Well, that's what we want to talk about. But you do know that you obviously haven't listened to Couples Quarantine because pretty much everything we do on this show ends up at the top of those Daily Mail yeah, articles. No, I, no but so, I like that because we're, I'm in control of the banter at the moment. What I mean is right. if it was me losing my call in the supermarket, having a slam yeah. match with Lindsay, and you're seeing my actual argument face, yeah. I, I, that, I try to keep that stuff private only because I like, to be the person who makes fun of those stories. Yeah. It's a very weird thing with laughter. Now, I didn't discover it till I was single because I'd never been single my whole life. I've had a long-term girlfriend from the age of 16. I would split up, cry into my duvet, go out, pull on the first weekend and fall in love with the first girl that fucked me. Literally did that till I was 35. Me. I'd slept with four, five, maybe five Wait, people. I would the, describe you both as absolute amateurs in that department. Yeah, we're hold very on, hold on. Like that. Until I was 35, then the Punani tsunami hit. <laughs> And honestly, I went through more crumpet than a Warburton's factory. <laughs> and what I discovered was um, it's really hard to be se sexy when you're fun, fun in the way I like to be sexy in a kind of masculine way. The g girls, no matter how much they fancy me, the mouth was always half open, ready to laugh at anything I said. <laughs> yeah. So the point is this. There are certain things once people are at to laugh at you for a living certain things get closed down and if you're involved in a story that's too serious or too traumatic in the news it becomes increasingly hard to mill that into humor you can of course Chloe you're right you can do it but Russell are you are you telling me because I've seen you both sides I mean I've seen you after exhausted after a show right so obviously you're moving on to the next city we had a quick chat you know you're tired you've given everything you can on stage and that's the mark of a good performer but are you saying you don't really have have that the, the sad clown a bit you, about you because we were talking to Not Jack. Really. I, I buzz my tits off till I fall asleep. And then Fine, because someone up, like I'm Jack to the next show because because a lot of the expectations I've met comedians who I wanted to be similar to yourself, life and soul, have have a joke. And, but then as soon as they they were off stage or off camera. They were a totally different person, almost slightly depressive. We talked to Jack Whitehall. I got to know him quite well, and he doesn't have that. He's obviously more quiet in real real life. But but you know, you're saying you're not one of those people. I think it's the extent. I don't. I I know Jack a bit. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say we're friends. I know him to say hello to. We shared. We shared like an area in Ocean Beach once. Obviously, we went social. Let's talk about comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I don't know him well enough, but my observation is 
<laughs> the better the stand up, the more likely that is. I know that puts me down a bit, but what I mean, what I mean by that is the better someone is at writing comedy. I don't write comedy. If the three of us, four of us, let's bring Lindsay along. It's weird. The four of us go out for a drink, something funny happens. Lindsay has a row in a restaurant. I don't go away and write that up. I would go on stage the next night with, I'm going to tell the story of what happened with, uh, Madeline Haskell, and I would just start telling it and see where the funnies are. Oh, that's amazing. A proper comedian goes away and writes it, layers it with jokes. Someone like Jimmy Carr would take the, the people out of it and just put them. You ever notice when you're in a restaurant and do 100 jokes? So there's more likely to be a gap between their stage personality and who they are in real life. I've okay. been like this since I was 11, since I was 12. When I was in the office, everyone was like, why don't you try stand up? So this is just this is just what I'm like. Obviously, I have shit days where I'm pissed off and being a miserable fucker, like every human being. But it doesn't relate to my job, unless I've had a real shocker of a gig. Then I'm in a bad mood afterwards. But anyone who's, who's fucked up at work should feel miserable afterwards. Let's mm. not medicalize everything. If yeah. You let off an ink cartridge over the boss's pitch and you lose the account. You should be fucked off with yourself. But the next day, dust yourself down get out there that's such a good point and when i was going to say in the beginning when you kept saying like oh i don't you know i don't, I don't want to come across as like that i i want to check my privilege and i don't want to be unrelatable and you say that a lot and it's really interesting because i think you actually don't realize like how relatable you are as a, as a comedian and i think part of that is because you do you're a storyteller you tell stories about things that happen in your real life that other people can really relate to but the, de- but the downside is I'm awful at, so it, it's never happened. I'm not showing off. But if I'm short <laughs> or need a story for TV, I can't just make, wouldn't it be funny oh, if imagine. Lindsay and I was in a, going for a couple's massage and this, I've tried it. You just don't get the laughs. So I can only work with the truth. Now that is both brilliant and but very re- restrictive. I can't even change the names of my aunties and uncles in a joke. It throws my timing out. Yeah, I'm that I'm like addicted. You're authentic, professionally addicted, and um, but there's so many negatives with that, and yeah. there's so many like I'd love to be really good at writing gags, and I am quite good at them, but I end up giving them to other comedians and other shows who should remain nameless, and they can storm the room with them, but I just can't use the written joke. I can only monetize my own personality. <laughs> now, now, like like um, Chloe and I, you're very kind of open about your your relationship. You sort of don't oh, hide open behind with a small o, don't Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Not like. <laughs> <laughs> not like open, not like uh, you know, three lads oh, round when you're at work. Yeah. But you know, um, it's like a game of kaplunk by the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> looks like a decorator's radio after a win. That was a oh, candle. Church <laughs> candle's been knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> so, so talk to. <laughs> so, uh, uh, why why do you why why are you so open? Like, do, do you guys have just a, a, a you know a fantastic relationship? And if so, kind of what are the what are the keys to having such a great you know, open relationship? So you've got to remember how Lindsay and I met. Lindsay was in the front row of my audience, so that I spoke to her parents before her, and I, they they just happened to be the three that I picked on in the front row and made fun of them. So the very foundations of our relationship is taking the piss out of each other, a bit of banter. And uh, Lindsay knew when she got into this, because it was a casual thing at first, because I was in the middle of that, you know, my tour of duty in Vajganistan, as I call it. <laughs> and then this girl, this girl comes along and I, we start falling in love. So she knows that I don't, I just take truth on stage the next night. So she would have been gone early doors if she didn't like that. Yeah. Whereas Lindsay will do something, she'll say something stupid or something will happen when we're out. And then she'll just look at me and go, put that in your notepad. And she'll tell me <laughs> to note it down. So she's, she's actually one of the people that you didn't write that down earlier because because I'm just doing my real life we'll be playing a board game and something hilarious will happen I'm not like your typical comedian I better put that in my notepad later on <laughs> Lindsay will be like when you and Christine had that fallout that was so funny write that down I'm like that would make a good routine so she's often the person telling me to write down some shit that's happened even if she's the butt of the joke she just sort of braces herself now and again in certain environments she'll say to me please don't do the story about when what I did with Prince Charles, please don't do that at the school. Because I had a gig at the school and she didn't want me to do that story. Then she got but it drunk. It's the best story. <clears throat> then she got drunk and in the interval she said, Do it, and I did it. Oh, good for her. So she sounds mega supportive. I was gonna ask you if you like try out your material on her. Yes. Well, you yeah. don't need to because she's like a, I know don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm 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 definitely a performer and I know how to do it a hundred times and find out where the beats are, but she's there. I'm not. I don't really invent much. I, sometimes I put other people attendant in the story that weren't there. But I don't change much. So she, it's funny 
as a scenario. I don't need to I don't yeah. need to stand up and go, what about if I said this? I'm like, is it funny if I talk about the time you nearly knocked out that bird dressed as a skeleton? She'll be like, Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't want you to talk about it. What is it? Is there anything that she's told you not to talk about, which you've talked about? The Prince Charles thing. I can't, I can't remember that. How do you not remember I that? I can't story? remember that. Tell me, tell me. Can we tell everyone else? Well, it's part of his so, stand up though, yeah. so we, I don't we know were if given <clears throat> we were given one rule to follow when we met the next in line to the throne. Only one. Don't touch him. Do not touch. You don't put your hands on him. You don't high five. It's not funny if you pinch his ass like Jerry from uh, Spice Girl. It's not funny. You just you just don't touch him. The security is different to how it was back then. You don't put your fucking hands on him. End of like that. Real talking to. And we stood in a line, smashed the talk, top draw banter. We were one of the top couples. That His Royal Highness is lingering on us the longest. And he turned around and walked off. And Lindsay was so pleased with herself. And she'd had a drink. She was like, I smashed it, didn't I? I'm going to go and get my handbag. Let's get wankered. And she moved the first person out of the way that was in front of her, just grabbed the bloke on the waist and shoved him. And it was him. He, it was him talking to Moira Stewart. She grabbed him just above his ass and went, sorry, babe, just fucking cleared him. It was, <laughs> oh, it was babe. It was, about, it was about four steps from a Haskell face-off against the kids. <laughs> Oh my God. And what, and what, what happened? Like what a security. So just- there was traditional touch the earpiece step in from security. Uh, with, because everyone's like, what was happening? A few people burst out laughing because they, they'd <laughs> never seen it. And then of course, Lindsay, where she had a drink starts to get upset. And I'm like, you know, like when someone you love is crying and you should want to give them a hug, but sometimes you want to smash their face. In. <laughs> <laughs> then we left and had a screaming argument in the Uber. Did, is that is that if you if you do you find you argue mostly over over drinking stuff? It, does she turn into because Chloe early days would turn into some? I mean, turn into someone. Well, oh, Karen. So like psycho drunk. Like, I would like, be, like, like to the point where I don't think I drank anything for months. Like somewhere in the middle of our relationship. Now I don't know what's happened. I'm fine. Yeah, Chloe. But, I, like you'd walk into a room and Chloe goes, "Why don't you just fuck off?" And you'd be like. <laughs> Psycho. I've only just gone and got a drink. Like, what's yeah, happened no. here? You are a fucking dickhead. Yes. Oh, Fuck. I'm not like that anymore. No, you're not like that anymore. <laughs> I'm anymore. No, it, no, no, it's not that. It's more Lindsay's judgment goes off. <clears throat> the night, we could have, we'll have a perfectly nice, <clears throat> like the hell, if I just tell you what happened with this girl dressed as a skeleton. Yeah. Because I don't get many nights off, many Fridays or Saturdays off. My nights are like the the, the pussy old days that no one wants off. It's like, who, let's all hang out on a Monday with our best buddies. Like, no one wants to hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when, <laughs> When I get a Friday off, it's a big deal. And we go out and we have it large and we're like, I feel normal again for a night. And my mates were friends with just up in this posh restaurant in Manchester. We've been given the whole table and, and Lindsay just, it pisses me off when she doesn't pace herself on the cocktail because she knows she can't handle it. And she's got what I call the broken puppet head. You know where the head's sort of wobbling and <laughs> like the puppet strings have been cut. And I'm like, you're pissed. I'm not pissed, Russell. I'm having fun. And it won't be me she goes for. It will be someone who uh, speaks down to me or something like that. Speaks and it, down to her. And it was one, uh, mate. And it was one of those toilets where you there's a central queuing area, and then it branches off, boys and girls, but you share hand washing facilities. So yeah. that's how I got ringside. And uh, <laughs> there's a queue. They're all queuing for the toilets. Lindsay's like wobblehead, waiting for her wee. It was a bit of a long queue for the toilets. And this girl has come in. I'm not joking. She's must have been five eleven, six foot. Or a unit, a proper unit, this girl. She was like, this is like obviously coked or something or something wrong with her mentally. She's like, this is the way it's going to be, girls. I need a slash and whichever door opens, I'm going in next. <gasps> Said it. Tried to do it as a joke, but you knew she was going in. And I'm, I'm thinking, Uh-oh. please, God, do not let it be the cubicle that Lindsay's standing in front of. And of course, I mean, sod's law. The cubicle opens. Lindsay's five foot three, right? Like a little Italian looking bird. And... Uh, this this girl has just stepped in and uh and Lindsay stepped in at the same time. She's this girl has put her hands on Lindsay and removed <gasps> removed her. I'd, n- I'd knock her out. Right, I'd smack her. Lindsay has put her hands on her, pulled her, <laughs> blocked the doorway like a spider's <laughs> web, and said, This is her exact words, I'm not gonna die tonight, but there is no way you're pissing before me. That was her exact words. <laughs> I'm not going to die tonight, but there is no way. Then it's fucking kicked off. The owner, the posh owner for the restaurant is in the toilet next door having a slash. She's a female. Couldn't write it. How embarrassing. She's not wanting to lob us out because I'm a bit on telly and everything. He's trying to make excuses. And the, we got rid of this, the coked up uh, girl that had done it. She's gone out. And then Lindsay's gone, am I in the wrong ear? She turned to the next girl in the, the queue. who's also the skeleton. Well, you back me up. Did she push in? Not knowing the next girl is the nutter's best mate. So she's gone, I didn't see anything. She said, you can fucking back me as well, you lying bitch. So she's gone for her. <laughs> 
I've then gone up to the dance floor to try and um, just like so embarrassed. And one of the birds is starting trying to chat me up, not realizing I'm with Lindsay. Of course, Lindsay's seen it and she's gone, why, why didn't you back me up? And then the mank bird's like, fucking come at me a bitch. And then that's it. Lindsay's carried out like a cairn terrier being <laughs> carried out of a pub. <laughs> and our night's over. This is half eight. We, we, it's half past eight. I, 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 I'm all dressed up. I was ready for a Halloween party. I then lose my phone in the cab and we're back home at half nine. You're damn right we had an argument because yeah. if she just regulated her temper a little bit better, that would have been a lovely night out. But does yeah, she, she realise that she, she, she's a firecracker? Yes, crack, absolutely. Or oblivious? Yeah, the next morning, I, I've, learned, I've learned a lot of lessons. But I've learned from myself there. I see red. I will work harder on myself and all that stuff. But sorry, yep. guys. Can I just fucking intercept here and say... <laughs> This bitch sounds like fun, meaning no, your she did. wife. Yeah, and, she... and not only that, but this other psycho bitch that came in and did deserved. that. A, I agree. Yeah, deserved that. But also, I, agree. To put, I mean, I would knock her out. And I'm not, well, I don't fight women no, when I'm No, drunk. you, I you said men. that. You said that. I wanted, so I, I want my wife to be a bit of a pit bull, not with me, right? Because I'm not doing that nonsense. But this fat girl in the gym bowled past Chloe and knocked her out of the way. And she came back and was like, oh, I was in the gym and this fucking bat, fat girl with that makeup on sassed and fucked me into a wall. And I was like, well, did you fill her in? Did you body shot her? She went, no, I didn't want to cause a fuss. I was like, fucking get out. Get out. Unless That's you're it. strangling her, I don't want to know. But the key difference is, James, if you'd worked up as a couple to this amazing date night out that you both really needed, yeah. the intelligent thing to do there was go, you're rude, you bitch, and walk off and still yeah. have the rest of our night. We didn't, it didn't have to end with us on the street, Lindsay crying, me losing my phone, all that all that drama, Mary J. Blige. We don't need no more drama, no more <laughs> pain. Well, oi, Beyonce over here, Beyonce over here. I'll tell you a fucking story about Beyonce. Say. So we're away for, <laughs> away for an England game, right? And basically, one of the lads stupidly decided that all the girl girlfriends, when they would come over to Ireland... Oh, give it context. Yeah, fine. fine give, give it, it background. Okay, fine. Give it, so basically, all the girls had flown out to Ireland for the final game of the Six Nations, right? It was it was known that the girls were welcome. No, nobody in their right mind had any problem with that. The questions were asked. It was brought up at meetings. Yeah. Can the girlfriends Yeah, can the girls come? come out? And the answer was unequivocally... Yes. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah, 100% yes, right. Okay. So then, anyway, the night of the thing, someone stood up. I'm not going to name him. I'm not going to shame. Stood up and gone. He doesn't even remember this. He doesn't remember. Goes, right, no girls allowed out tonight. And I'm like, well, my fucking, my, my wife's here. So I was like, that's, we're not having that. Anyway, what's happened is the boys have obviously, because boys pillow talk, because they get a bit fanny drunk and they're like, you know, they're like, well, I didn't say it, but someone else did, right? <laughs> so they've all. Just, they've all... <laughs> just call it Jamie George. No, no, Olivia I'm not. Daly. Stop Wait, fucking telling names. are so funny. No, it's not them. Yeah. are so funny that they knew, they know that I'm like your missus when I'm pissed. And so they told me and were like deliberately yeah. like feeding me. Constantly. As a senior player, they got into my <laughs> missus and were like, right, I tell you what, well, Raz has missus up. <laughs> And she'll razz me up. So I'm I'm sitting there drinking Guinness with these Irish players, this sort of thing. And she's come over and I'm like, the chewed, I can spot it. You know, you can like dogs yep. have got all these senses. I could smell it. I could yep, smell yep. the drama across the other side of the Like room. an epileptic sort of... fit, the way a dog can smell yeah. an epileptic fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started to go to resuscitate. All right. And and basically she she came into it and we we had the blazing round. She was basically like a suffragette. She was fighting for women's rights. And I hadn't said anything. And she, the more drunk she got, the more steam we got. We had the biggest fucking row but we've also, ever like, had. I had the boys winding me up. In, in fact, we'll just call it a total. It was Elliot Daly, Jamie George, and Johnny May all were winding me up, basically feeding me all of this stuff that was getting me more and more amped. The girls were like screaming, crying, being really angry. And so I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I'll take one for the team. And I'm, I won't mode. lie. I yeah. cause mayhem. And the best thing is, I haven't done anything, Russell. I'd honestly not done anything. All I wanted to have a beer. So by the end of it, I was like that on one side of the room. Lads were talking about your wife's crying. I was like, fuck off. Like, God, he's not very but, nice, is he? But, but, but Chloe, looking back, do you think that was a proportional and correct reaction? Or would you have liked to have done a version of it that wasn't quite as looking back looking back I wish I had just said to the girls like to be honest like the island team invited us out with them and I would <laughs> I felt looking back I would have just said fuck it let's just go out with them it's only because you think they're better looking than the English boys ragging from the bitch. baddies yes <laughs> right. but, but instead like no yeah I wish I'd handled it differently and I'll tell you why because when you go into a team environment like that especially and I'm, I'm not being self-sexist but let's just call a spade a spade especially as a woman when you go into a team environment like that it is kind of your job to be there and be supportive, whatever they decide to do. So I made the wrong call and I, I've always looked back on that and regretted it. But the rugby player in question who caused the mayhem and I are now very, very good friends. So it's all okay in the end. Russell, how do you find your, um, how do you find having a relationship in the public eye where you're well known, your missus isn't well known? Do you, yeah. you said obviously a woman chatting you up, you're a good looking lad. 
Um, you know, how does that work? Uh, so Lindsay, um, for a start, that it works very well with us too. Lindsay won't, won't appear on camera. I can't even get her to be in the audience on this daytime show I'm doing to be have a shot of her way. She won't do anything like that. She's just shy and doesn't enjoy that sort of attention. That sort of works in our relationship. Some relationships, there would be a clash there. She will just about do red carpets and stand there and pose and stuff. It's a shame because she's a good-looking girl, but she's just not comfortable being photographed and all that. So far as when we're out and about, if I've got my professional comedian hat on, she's got no problem with the girls hanging around and coming for photos and stuff like that. What she can't stand is the piss take, like if we're in a club and there's a girl wants to join our table and, go, can, and start pouring herself a drink from the champagne. That's when that's when the the red line is crossed, but she is definitely not a what I would call a jealous person. Neither Lindsay or I are jealous at all because it's just the trust is there. Yeah. So if I if I'm in a bar and there's a guy properly chatting up Lindsay, it does it, it not in a kinky way. It just does, it doesn't have bother me at all. Yeah. It does. It, in fact, I still and always have done any girl I've dated want my girl to be the one the guys want to talk to in the bar I yeah quite like i quite like that because i'm going over to the end of the night but if you want to know one of the other things that causes a row between me and Lindsay at the end of the night and i think from what i can gather we're completely reversed to a lot of boy and girls i, I i'm only i know i look like fucking stick man the not the book by julia donaldson but i cannot i can't fucking handle it i like to get on it till 6 a.m drink wise i don't I don't do any of that dyson stuff um <laughs> Well, not that you're going to admit on a couple's quarantine anyway. <laughs> Be the first yeah. comedian There's I know. one drug that does not work on me is I, I don't get it. I, I'm, I don't judge other people that get an effect out of it, but it just doesn't, it doesn't work on me. Anyway, I can handle my booze is what I'm saying. And I cannot bet Lindsay when she dresses up. I fancy her so much. We can barely get out the front door. Like I want to nail her to the door. On the oh, way. I love still that. Still now. Still now. I'm just like, not mad about her in a romantic, nice way. Mad about her in a dirty, porn, That's pervy brilliant. way. Um and I have to look at that all night with her dancing on the dance floor. Maybe she's talking to another bloke and she's got a short skirt and I, all I'm thinking about is ra- ragging a sense. I'm like, please don't drink to the point where you're going to throw up. Please don't. Please. Do. And every time it's the what I call the Jurassic Park walking, where she's like, <laughs> and then <laughs> chunders and falls asleep. And that, that I, the next day, I, just, I don't even want to speak to her. Oh, uh, I I've spent uh, the whole night with 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 the. I'm trying not to use a coarse him, image here, but the my balls inflating like space. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think it's wrong to fancy your wife. No, it's not. no I. I, and, I and, love and, this, and I can't. I cannot bear that the night ends up with me falling asleep. What? Surely that's the culmination of the end of the evening. Amazing drunken sex at two in the morning with someone you love. Never, never, never. Nah. It's but me why here. don't? Well, I fall asleep on my own. And I, why I don't, don't you? Um, I I love. Like this, I think I always dress up for him to make him get really excited to me, and so that at the end of the night, I like I'm guaranteed to get laid. I'm guaranteed to get some action. But this one, once he's out and there's a crowd around him, like I said at the beginning, like like archetypal performer, and also like usually like the dominant male in the room, he gets so overexcited and carried away with everyone else that by the end of the night, he's exhausted and he just wants to go to bed. And I'm like, oh, motherfucker, James, I wouldn't have worn the slutty outfit if it hadn't been for you. No, but I do. I do drink. Do you drink a bit too much? As Greg Davies is my favourite image. Is it like pushing a marshmallow through a keyhole? <laughs> Greg Davies. <laughs> is he the giant tall? Is yeah. The giant TV he said it's like pushing a marshmallow through a keyhole. No, no. <laughs> No, I don't have that problem. I'm. Mate, more, I've got the um, other. I've got brewers hard on. It's worse. No, I try to do. I try to do a job, sort of mid before the end of the evening. Like we'll slope off somewhere or try and have some. Fun. Ah, that's interesting. Because like, yeah. oh, I was going to say that could uh, be a, something for you to look at. You know, obviously, again, public eye coming out. You know, my favourite is me and Chloe walk out of a disabled toilet and there'll be like an elderly, an elderly woman. She's like, oh, "What are you doing?" And I go, "My wife's not very well." <laughs> it, would, it, it just wouldn't cut the mustard with me. I mean, without going and giving too much insight, I wouldn't be able to do it justice. It, oh, you need a pro, you need like, a proper work bench. Lay down. I right. need a, to- a top to tail survey, <laughs> and I'm not going to do that on the floor of the disabled. Oh, all right, but listen, yeah, but sometimes you need a pretty pre warm up. I didn't realise I was dealing with such a professional. I, I apologise. Oh. Take notes. I take notes. Yeah, absolutely. Minimum need a workbench. In society, you feel weird for saying lecherous comments about someone you're married no, to. I'm no, pretty but... sure that's still okay. No, it's but not couples thing. quarantine. Couples quarantine is all about you know loving the relationship and loving the one you're with and actually saying, do you know what? It is normal to want to shag your wife in a multitude of different ways. Some legal, some illegal in certain countries. It's absolutely exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, uh, that's but that is why the je- the jealousy thing is important because once you have that complete trust and you can play those safe 
safe little mind games with each other. I.e., I can sit with my mates and Lindsay. Some bloke might chat up Lindsay at the bar, and and we it's safe. It keeps a little chilly spice to the relationship. Definitely. We're never going to be there. Right? We never look at each other. We never look up from our drinks. <laughs> like you're going to get bored with each other. Look yeah. at the floor. You fucking look at the floor, princess, when we're out. Who <laughs> wants to be in a relationship like that? Yeah, yeah. A lot of men. A lot of men are so possessive like that and think it's weird. You and, just sex life guy. Yeah. yeah. But Chloe actually, I mean, we talked about this, I think, on, on uh, the very first Boys Don't Cry we did with you uh, about jealousy and that I am a jealous person if if things reach a certain level. But I'm very much like you. Like, I, you know. No, you, you never care. It's what I hear about it later. So, like, I mean, weeks later and where suddenly we'll have a fight and he was like, well, when we went to that party, don't think I didn't notice that you were dancing with X yeah, or right. you were talking to Y or I saw blah, 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 cracking onto you by the loo, whatever it is. And I'm like... But I did I do anything? And he's and always the, the answer is no because I've never. Not that I saw that. Russell. Not that um, I saw the <laughs> forensic kit and, and the black light didn't come but then, up. But you do it in front of you. That'd be disrespectful. Then, <laughs> well, it all depends what night of the week it's it is. Just rude. Just yeah. go around the corner. But you don't. You never care at the time. But it's weird because you don't really forget. And I do hear about it at some point. Mm. So I mean, what is it? That's is it quite just... a fem- feminine trait, though, isn't it? Getting the index card out from two years ago. I'm... No, this memory is still... Yeah, but I, I think we'll find it's because I'm highly cerebral and I've just got a very good memory. That's the thing is that, <laughs> is that, is that I don't... I'm not jealous. Like, like I I think that, uh, you know, because, again, we've talked on your show and, 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 and we know we, we could have gone for hours with this, but we won't. It's about kind of <laughs> things like social media and yeah. the jealousies around social now, that's media. That's different. Stuff. It's different. When you're both in... I'm talking... It seems like old school or something that's hard to remember now, but when you're both in a pub or a club together, you're both in the same room yeah unless you're married to a complete psychopath nothing can go wrong it's safe if Lindsay's out i, I mean i'm not immune to jealousy lindsay has been out and she's like, hey, a couple of guys joined our table tonight like when she went, she went to vegas with the girls on holiday i was fine until some guy with like deep pockets bought a table for the girls and all he was saying was one guy sat there with a drink and 10 girls that still ruffled by there is some male in me somewhere that was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. i want to buy the table <laughs> and it, if i'd have been there i'd have been sat next to Lindsay going fucking great and we're going to flirt with him we'll get free drinks but <laughs> yeah. because i wasn't there yeah it felt threatening like who is he what did he look like what were his intentions but i, I find as soon as we're in the same environment i'm like well and I, I can't be clubbed over the head and dragged into a van and attacked and, and, uh, and I'm there, so that's not going to happen to her either. Yeah. And then it's, As, it's, you're sort of safe, really. Keep each other on your toes a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Have yeah. there been any um, any real stories with uh, with other girls coming on to you where Lindsay's gone gone mad and sort of had, you know, end up almost having to choke her out? Uh, uh, do you know what? There's... The, I'll get in trouble for saying this, but I've noticed a real difference between the North and the South here. So I don't know which parts of the country you guys grew up in prim- primarily, but I was on Essex and London. Oh, so Manchester. When, <laughs> so me and me and Lindsay went out sugar out or something like that. If people saw me arrive, even with a date, let alone with someone I was engaged to or married to, uh, and Lindsay goes to the loo, everyone leaves us alone. Lads might come over, girls might come over in groups of photos. Up, up north, right? Lindsay would be like getting cystitis where she didn't go to the toilet because the second she did, it's like, who's that bird you with? We're staying at Travel Lodge, me and my friends. If you want to come for a drink after, like the girls would come over. So they're a bit more ruthless yeah. up north. And that's what I think Looks like quite, I should quite, go rightly, north. quite rightly pisses Lindsay off is the they're taking the piss out of her there. Yeah. You know, yeah. just the same as a bloke who was doing do it, and blokes with not, not very many men would ever dare speak like that because of the, the risk of violence sort of thing. But you know, I would feel mugged off, as we would say in Essex, if someone was behaving like that. We did once. This is a funny story. We were queuing to get in the sugar hut. We were in a posh queue, but there was still a queue. And this guy turns up, fucking covered in paint. Oh, I own a carpet firm. I'm friends with Mick. Like, obviously, got money, but manual labourer. You were going to be in there late. You're my favourite comic. What's your name? My name's Darren. Fucking with loads of banter in the queue. He's fucked off. Later that night, we're in like the VIP having a drink, and he's come and sat at our table. Why wouldn't I say yes? It's not. I like meet is meeting people all night, and he slowly became more and more camp as the talk went on and in the end he's like so why don't you look if you if your missus has got because my my mum mother-in-law and father-in-law i brought them ironically out to a nightclub if they're, <laughs> they're all going back for like why don't you just come back to mind me and you have a, you know, a few cheeky drinks oh no thanks mate i'll be going back with my wife so, but then said it two three four times and then without warning with nobody like Lindsay went why would he fucking go back with you he's not fucking gay is he he's married to me fuck off just from yeah. like from naught to bang like that yeah that's the only time I've explicitly 
seen that because she wouldn't mug herself, if you know what I mean, by looking yeah. desperate in front of her some some girl. I won't use a derogatory term, it's not just term, but some girl who was putting out there on me. She wouldn't lower her own behavior yeah. for her yeah. satisfaction. But the guy was just too much. But I made four excuses. He went, he went for one there in the car. Like, Do you want to come back for a drink? It was incredible. I've never seen. Please come back. Like the full you turn. The full, the, oh, the, like the, behind the mask, it slipped. Going, I'd love it to like, come back, please. Yeah, that's what they call me, the converter. Yeah, but you know, um, I remember, I remember your first you stand-up. You just listened that yourself. I'm the guy. I remember your, your first stand-up about, I must be like 10 years, whenever I saw it, and you were like, I was like, you came on, you were like super flamboyant, super camp, you had your highlights in your hair. And I was like, Mate. God, this guy is just so funny and gay. Like, he's really nice. And you went, and halfway through the act, you went, oh, by the way, I'm not gay. And I was like, <laughs> oh. Um, and obviously, life, you know, yeah. I've, I've had that and that. I've not had it my whole life, rather. I never had any awareness of that. I, I come from a very small world, council estate. My mates are literally Wayne, Lee, Scott, <laughs> Phil. Terry. Dan. Dan. <laughs> They're my mates. That's the boys' group. And I've always had a girlfriend, and I've always liked talking about girls, and I'm always sending pictures of boobs. I'm just a normal black. But it wasn't until I stood on stage that I realised people perceive me as camp. It's never come up before. I don't, I though. No, I did. No, no, First time do. I watched it, I was like, no. God, I, yeah. That's gold. That is gold. A gap between perception and reality is comic gold. Yeah. You know? And at yeah. the time, I just split up with Sadie, and I'd I just got exposure on TV, and I was experimenting with how I looked. It was a it was a bad year, all the eyeliner and all that. <laughs> I know that. But uh, yeah, it was a confusing time. But weirdly, uh, successful with with the ladies. Do you know the one of the most, been the most my DMs ever? This is why I never understand women. One of the most crashed DMs I've ever had after a TV appearance with just. The, you know, please phone me messages, was after I dressed as Beyonce on TV. What? So explain that shit. So I, I dressed as Beyonce and did a, the Crazy in Love, the full dance, stop to, stop to start, and that was a... <laughs> you see, funny, are you single? <laughs> Just hundreds of them. It must be to do with the hips or the dance or something. I don't I know mean, what it is. All, I, will say, <laughs> I will say, women find men who can dance. And I'm guessing if you did a whole Beyonce routine, you can dance. We find it hugely uh, Guys, attractive. you need to link it. to into, In the link to this, please go crazy in love. Russell Gaines, one of my proudest achievements. I copied the video move for move. I didn't do like a comic relief version. I copied all of Beyonce's dance move for move. I'm going to Google we'll, this. We'll have a look at that. Um, <laughs> Russ, before we go, I want to want to know, do you have th three tips? Because obviously there's a lot of people who listen to Couples Quarantine. We, people send their questions in. If you want to send some questions in to, to ask for to answer CQ questions at jameshaskell.org. They send us all th sorts of things about dating, about being single, about whether some people are interested. What are your three tips to having a happy marriage, do you think, to put you on the spot? Uh, my number one, I, I, I'm loath to offer some of these in case some successful relationships out there don't necessarily tick these boxes. So I'm not it's, saying, your, it's your perspective. I'm not yeah. saying you have to have these. This is just my observation amongst my friends and speaking to lots of couples over and over again is that... You need as many opposites as possible to make it interesting without being so different it can't work. So, for example, I'm watching The Crown at the moment and it's heartbreaking watching Charles was into the countryside and Diana was into the town and it was never going to work. Broadly speaking, you want one that's up, obsessed, really into the accounts and bills and tidy and folding the tops and someone else is like, say what, my bra's on the floor. This is grow up. <laughs> so you'll have surface arguments, but underneath, when the shit hits the fan, if your diary empties because of COVID, you don't want two mother hens panicking. You mm -hmm. want one like me going, how am I going to earn money? Fuck, what if we're skinning the other one going, babes, it's going to be all right. You know, roll with the punches. So get <laughs> that balance. And it's really hard for for the millennials, the people, or not even millennials, the people under 23, 22, because they've grown up being told to look for people who are like them because of the narcissistic technology-based age we look in. It's very tempting. It's got to be someone who's like me. She's into rugby. Uh, she likes going out. She's just like me. It's, it would be a mistake. You, It's how boring to fuck yourself. But that's <laughs> what Instagram wants you to do. Um, so you need those the piquancy of, of the opposites. And the other, my second tip would be, and Lindsay, if you're listening, this would be as well, is... Um, Particularly if you're if you're in a, a, a job or if you're not great with booze, you want one person who de-escalates situation when you're out because we've been talking about conflict and drinking and going out tonight. And all I don't, I'm as I say, I've never been in a fight, never a violent person, but I don't need any encouragement to become animated with my mouth, and my mouth is what gets me into trouble. 
And so we got into a bit of an altercation in Thailand, of all places, with a couple of lads who were shouting abuse at me from across the street. And I'm I'm absolutely pissed off, mate. I've been drinking fish bowls all night, (laughs) drunk. And I'm like, if someone calls me the C word, I think it's funny. It's a sign I'm on TV enough, even in my drunken testosterone haze. But it was just one little fucking fucking bastard. How dare they from Lindsay? It tipped me over the edge on that particular night. And I'm, I'm not proud of it. And I have spoken about it on stage. Unfortunately, I was carrying um, some, some beer home. <laughs> it was so pathetic. Bearing in mind, I've literally never hit another human being in my life. I did a double dash of the bottles, crossed my chest like chopper with two <laughs> broken bottle shafts, like fucking jig where I've watched too many, like I think I'd watched a violent movie on the, on the plane. And I was, I was like, let's fuck, it's fucking on. Let's have it. And, and Lindsay, <laughs> changed into please was a weird crying begging <laughs> wife i was testosterone too are you fucking going in cunts come on in we are now walking towards each other in thailand an island where you're just thrown in prison for sneezing there's these geordies but i was about as big as the the smallest one's bicep coming towards me it's so funny do you know what diffused the situation this is not a punchline this is not made up for stage this is genuinely what diffused. when i got towards them they've been shouting abuse at me thinking i was nick grimshaw and when I got close, I was his favourite comic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fucking hell. True story. But the point is... Stupid fuckers. <laughs> make sure you've got one of you. If we, if, we, if tonight's subject is drinking and going out, a de-escalator. Because it yeah. can be really dangerous. Like genuinely, yeah. people get probably hurt. And when this lockdown's finished and we're all back in the pubs and we're all be binge drinking too much, you want, you want a... You want a, I call it back in the taxi. Let's go home. Let's watch the Kardashians. Let's have a toasty. Not worth the energy. Because yeah. most of the time, it ain't worth, the only thing that's worth the energy is if you're being physically attacked. That's yeah. the only thing that's ever worth the energy. That's Agreed. my second tip. Third tip, find whatever it takes. Go as far as you're comfortable to stay sexually interested in each other. When that goes, I don't give a shit how much you're both into country walking, how faithful you are, how much you don't argue. It is dead. Dead. Game over. You should be porn star pervily obsessed with the person you're with. And if you're not, you need to find some pervy games or something <laughs> you can yeah. do to trick that brain back. Because as soon as you're fucking, I know it sounds coarse, but if you are fucking, you can defeat the world. Agreed. 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 Russell, I think was- that's absolutely brilliant advice. And uh, very, um, unfortunately for point three, very similar to the advice my dad always gives people. <laughs> Oh, with yeah. a PowerPoint. Let's let's just break that out into a... a Wait, here's, um, <laughs> here's some slides of me and Judy. No, not again, not again. Uh, a feature not on this morning. Squirting is not possible to achieve. Ah. This video. <laughs> um, Russell, where can people where can people find you if they want to find you on social media? So it's Russell underscore Kane on Twitter and on Instagram. And you're on um, TV at the moment as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing. I'm, uh, I've been helping out with a new show, getting that off the ground with, with Steph McGovern, who's so amazing. Yeah, if you ever work she's with great. That's she's Steph's amazing. Back lunch, as well as cropping up on all the the normal stuff you see comedians on the stand up shows, the panel shows. But I'm really like back in this Channel Four show at the moment. And once we inject that Viagra vaccine, I'll be immune and I'll have a boner. Win win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, win-win for everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Russell. Honestly, it's been one of my favourite episodes. You're just the best, oh, thank you. The best thank guest you. to have on. And um, right. yeah, thank you guys so much. This has been Couples Quarantine. Make sure you tune in next week for episode 19. Yeah, please share, please subscribe. Uh, leave us your feedback, good or bad. We want to hear from you. And remember, you can send your uh, questions in to us. We will answer them on any topic, relationship, sex, anything you want to know to CQ questions at James Haskell. We will catch you all very soon.